This is a production of Cornell University. Hello and welcome. Each of the past few Decembers here at ILR, we've tried to bring you some type of update on the year and give you a sense of a year in review. This year we thought we'd try something a little different and make it a live webcast and hopefully have it be a little more interactive. Uh, in that vein, please feel free during at any time during Harry's comments uh, to go ahead and send us a question through your through the interface and we're going to try to do our best to answer those at the end. So without further ado, I want, I'd like to introduce the ILR's Jack Shankman Professor and Kenneth F. Kahn Dean, Harry Katz. Thanks, Chris. Uh, I'm delighted to have this uh, chance to interact with you. Um, so what I want to do is kind of overview uh, some of the things that have helped make this another great year for ILR. I'm going to talk with you about some of the individuals and some of the initiatives that are underway that have contributed to our success. There's so many things going on at ILR. It's hard for me to narrow it down to just a few things, but uh, I'll just focus in on, on several items. Um, always important to the school are the faculty. And there I first want to mention to you that we're engaged in actively searching for six new faculty members. We have a base of 61 faculty on campus, and I've authorized searches across labor economics, OB, HR, and labor relations. We have a list of candidates coming in. We typically bring three to five candidates in for each position as finalists, and we're right in the middle of that process. I've begun to make some offers. We find these days that we're often competing with some of the very best business schools and the very best industrial relations, labor relations programs all over the world uh, to hire those great new faculty. Uh, faculty individually have accomplished much. They, they do a terrific job teaching, of course, and they continue to do incredible research and outreach activity. I just want to mention a few examples. Uh, we're really proud of the success of Jeff Cowie, a great uh, social historian on our uh, faculty whose latest book, Staying Alive, uh, has been widely reviewed. It's won a number of prizes. And with uh, Jeff's continuing success, I had the pleasure just a few weeks ago of uh, awarding him a new chair, an endowed chair that was provided uh, to the school through the generosity of one of our alumni. Um, our faculty are also engaged with a number of new campus-wide initiatives. We have the campus-wide economics department underway under the able leadership of Kevin Halleck. And in addition, uh, we're a part of what's now called the Business at Cornell Consortium, joining with the Johnson School, Dyson School, Hotel School in adding new curriculum and uh, activities for those undergraduates on our campus who want to concentrate in business. Uh, and as part of that new consortium, we have three faculty, Pam Tolbert, Diane Burton, and Lewis Hyman, uh, who have joined together uh, and are teaching this semester uh, a new course, the Introduction to Management course that's a required part of that new uh, business minor. And, and by the way, uh, 850 undergraduates across campus have already signed up for the minor. It's only been in existence for a year. And out of that 850, 230 of those students are ILR undergraduates. Uh, our faculty are active not only on campus, but we have a terrific faculty that does outreach and extension work. And I want to mention the, the great work that Jeff Grabelski is doing in a new partnership we have with the AFL-CIO. And Jeff and the AFL have created a new National Labor Leaders Institute, a program in which 30 top-level leaders, not only from unions, but from a number of social NGO active organizations uh, promoting uh, domestic workers' rights and immigrant worker rights. Uh, they're joining together in, an, in a new year-long program of education, uh, and we're delighted about that new partnership. Um, we've continued uh, a number of other initiatives on campus uh, uh, here at ILR that are serving our undergraduate and graduate students. Um, one key initiative uh, here, I'm continuing what was started under Dave Lipsky and accelerated under Ed Lawler, and that's internationalization. The world of work is becoming more global, so we're working hard to train our students, undergrad and grad, to enter a more global workplace 
We do that by enhancing the curriculum and also enhancing internships and study and uh, independent honors and all sorts of other study opportunities that students can do abroad. And some of that involves new partnerships we've formed with a handful of universities where we have both student and faculty exchanges going on at those universities. And the latest addition in terms of a partnership is a partnership we now have with Renmin University, a fine university in Beijing, China. Uh, I was just there in October to sign off on uh, the full arrangements for that. We already had sent seven of our undergraduates for a summer program at Renmin last summer. And now we have students in the next semester both going to Renmin and some of their students coming to ILR. Um, we also have service learning uh, opportunities expanding both domestically but also internationally. Service learning often involves uh, summer experiences where our students engage in outreach activity that, that pursues the social good as well as providing uh, educational opportunities for those students. And one place where we uh, have been running uh, really effective uh, service learning is with uh, an NGO called the SVYM NGO in India uh, that, that is led by Dr. Ballou, who both founded uh, SVYM and continues to head it. SVYM provides uh, health services, counseling, and assistance to the rural poor in India. And now I want to pause and give us a chance to look at a short video that's prepared that highlights first both our partnership at Renmin, and you'll hear from a couple of the young faculty, Linda Song and Brian Lee, who are part of the Renmin faculty that are engaged in our partnership. And then we'll go on to see Dr. Ballou talk about his Global Citizen Initiative that he brings to students who visit him in India. And also, Dr. Ballou has visited us on campus and talked about what it means to be a global citizen. So let's turn to that video. We've seen what the faculty does, what the amazing programs that uh, Cornell runs. And we see that there's a fit between what Remin does and what Cornell does. And hopefully, in our future collaborations, we can capitalize on this fit and ensure that we have programs that uh, are beneficial to our audiences worldwide, both in China and in the United States. I think this is a very good um, synergy between these two schools. And once we have collaboration relationship with Cornell University, I believe Cornell University can get to know the true China. Take the context of China and how do we take the best practices in China, in the China context, and make use of it. And then let's learn from the best practices done in the United States and find out whether that's context specific or whether we can use it globally, worldwide. To me, global citizenship is not about opportunities to go out there and change the world. It's about opportunities that we use in the world that's available to us, around us, to change ourselves. I think it's a huge opportunity to appreciate that this, this constructs of citizenship, nationality, religion, color are actually very restraining and constraining. They are sort of very narrow in, their, in the way they are constructed. So to me, global citizenship is a very expansive, all-inclusive concept. It's an, it's, it, it goes beyond the passport that you hold to an identity of believing that every one of us is equal and truly a partner in this march towards progress. And I think these kind of experiences gives a window of an opportunity for students to begin their journey of global citizenship. I know I'm not being, I, I don't have to be stupid in saying that a four-week experience can make them all believe they're global citizens. But I do believe it's an opportunity to engage both yourself with the rest of the world and the rest of the world with yourself to appreciate this expansive understanding. And once the journey begins, there is no end. They can't come back. They would never be able to see themselves in very narrow terms. So I want, want to talk with you about some other initiatives underway at ILR, but before I do, I also want to remind you that we're welcoming your questions. You can type in questions using the interface uh, on your computer, uh, and uh, Chris is going to accumulate those questions. I'm going to talk for another 15, 20 minutes or so and show you some videos along the way, but, but then we're, we're going to stop and, and, and respond to those questions. And so feel free to start typing them in. You can also, of course, type them in later when we take that pause for questions. So another key initiative at ILR is making greater use and new uses of technology in the educational uh, process. We, we love the fact that we 
see our students uh, directly here on campus and interact with them personally. But the technology is allowing us to enhance the reach of our educational uh, programs. And two examples of how we're making new use of technology is that we've just received New York State approval for a new master's program in human resource management uh, that's designed for working professionals, professionals that have had eight years or so of work experience and are going to be continuing to work while they're participating in our master's uh, program. The program will uh, take 16 months for completion. It'll in involve a sizable content of material that's on eCornell that's delivered over the internet. We have some great courses that have been developed by our faculty and as you know within eCornell we already provide a lot of instruction in non-degree programming and this really is the first time we're entering the degree space. We're also the innovators on campus. We're the first college at Cornell that's taking advantage of the opportunity the provost has afforded us to experiment with what's called blended uh, degree programs. So in any case, back to that program, the students will have some of their content delivered on the internet through eCornell, and then they'll also come to campus for three weeks of intense instruction spread over time, one week at a time, uh, because they're busy working adults. We're going to start marketing the program in January, and we hope to launch the first class uh, a year from next June. Um, there's also a lot of talk around campus, and I, I know you hear about it in the press, about uh, MOOCs, Massive Open Online Courses. And as you probably have heard, Cornell has joined uh, a consortium of universities led by uh, Harvard and MIT uh, to produce some MOOCs. And uh, Cornell opened up a competition, again, under the direction of the provost office, uh, seeking uh, faculty proposals. And they're producing now four MOOCs. And wouldn't you know of it, it's one of the ILR faculty, a person I already mentioned, Lewis Hyman, a historian, a business historian, actually, whose proposal was accepted and Lewis is developing his MOOC and it's going to be offered uh, this spring. This is all an experiment. Those MOOCs are not for credit. We're not quite sure uh, how many people are going to stick with it. You've seen reports in the press that some MOOCs have been more successful than others. This gives us at ILR and us at Cornell a chance to experiment with this new technology. Uh, what's also obviously really important to us ever more at ILR and Cornell are, are our students. Um, we at ILR have incredible demand for our program. That's on my mind for, because just this Monday we announced the admission for early applicants to next year's freshman class. Last year we had 400 applications. This year we've already seen early applicants grow another 9%. Um, and we'll wait and see how many regular applicants we get for the, the spring pool. Uh, we're proud not only of the quality of our students but of their social and demographic diversity. We're also quite proud of our MILR program that's now grown uh, sizably. We're up to over 60 students in each class. Those students as well are really doing terrifically on the job market uh, when they graduate from our program. Um, and then we also are extremely proud of the individual accomplishments of our students. I could talk with you for hours uh, about those wonderful accomplishments. I'm just going to highlight one student and then we're going to show you a video and you'll get to see him talking about his experience at ILR and that's Simon Bohemi and Simon's a graduating senior this year at ILR uh, and, and as you'll hear him explain uh, he's won two uh, remarkable fellowships that are fellowships highly competed for across the United States. He won a Truman Fellowship uh, along with a small number of other students around the country. And then just a few weeks ago, we learned that Simon also won a Mitchell uh, Fellowship that will allow him to study in Ireland for, for a year. Uh, and Simon's the first Cornell student to ever win the prestigious uh, Mitchell uh, Fellowship. So now let's turn to that video, and you can hear it from Simon himself. I've been honored to receive two awards, the uh, Truman Scholarship and the Mitchell Scholarship. And the Truman Scholarship was awarded junior year last spring, uh, where I was one of 62 students uh, selected uh, based on academic and leadership merit uh, for entering public service. And so one of the benefits of that award is we win $30,000 for graduate school. And then also this summer, I'll be in DC uh, working at one of the government agencies. And then the Mitchell Scholarship is a one-year opportunity in Ireland where I'll be studying for a 
master's degree at National University Ireland um, Maynooth. And 12 students are selected, so it's a huge honor. I ended up in ILR because of the conflict resolution program that I, uh, you know, throughout high school, I, there was a lot of conflict whenever I was leading teams and so um, I wanted to learn more about the theory and the practice of, of resolving conflict and coming up with more win-win solutions and I've been able to do that through my coursework and my research. It's the intellectual community, the coursework, the research and the professors, you know, the open door policy professors are very open to talking to you and that's something that I've gained the most out of it is you know talking with professors and my students and peers outside the classroom but also ILR is one of the most supportive undergraduate colleges at Cornell um, in terms of travel through the ILR travel grant one reason why I was able to attend the GSL program and later um, after I did India I went to South Africa last summer and it's because of this community of constant support and um, and ILR has just been such an amazing experience, and I couldn't have won the Truman or the Mitchell without ILR. Another important part of the ILR school is our extension division now comprised of a number of institutes, and one of the most important institutes we have is called EDI, the Employment and Disability Institute that conducts research and provides technical assistance and training uh, to help the disabled uh, integrate uh, more fully into the labor market and to help organizations accommodate and adjust and respond uh, to the needs of the disabled. Uh, that institute, the EDI, is led ably by Suzanne Briere, who also serves as my Associate Dean of Outreach and the other co-lead of EDI is Thomas Golden. In a few seconds I'm going to uh, turn it over and, and have them show you a video with Thomas speaking and what Thomas is going to be talking about is the latest great success of EDI and that is that they've won a grant called the Promise Grant uh, from New York State and the federal government. It's actually money that's provided by the federal government that passes through New York State and EDI is the principal investigator of a, get this, 23 million dollar grant. That's the largest grant we've ever received in the history of ILR and one of the largest grants in the whole social science field that's ever been received at Cornell. That's going to allow EDI and its partners to deliver services to, to uh, disabled teenagers to help them uh, integrate and adapt to the labor market. So again, let's hear it from the main player here. Let's turn it over now to a video and you'll see Thomas talking about the Promise Grant. The New York Promise Initiative is a uh, five-year research initiative that's funded by the Department of Labor, U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, Social Security Administration, and the U.S. Department of Education um, with the sole purpose of identifying interventions and innovative approaches for helping youth between the ages of 14 and 16 who receive supplemental security income to enhance their post um, high school adult outcomes. The ILR school was their natural conduit to be working with the governor's office on pulling together this application which was successfully funded because from a theoretical perspective it really built on some of the work of our resident scholars, Pam Tolbert's work on institutional scripting, Lisa Nishi in her work on um, inclusive workplaces and diversity. Um, in the workplace and even Brad Bell and his work on action in experiential learning informed a lot of the design of the initiative itself. Practically speaking though it built on the last probably 20 years of work within the Employment and Disability Institute in the ILR school. Another important facet of the initiative is that it syncs really well with the ILR school um, and our contribution to being a part of the land-grant university uh, which Cornell University is. Uh, our priority and focus being on practical applications, solving everyday problems that we face um, in the world. And so the, the experiences of youth with SSI who typically spend a lifetime on benefits, um, have higher rates of incarceration, um, don't complete high school, um, there are real problems, there are real issues with that that need practical application and solutions. While the New York State Promise Initiative um, is going to be a research design within New York State that cuts across three geographic areas, the, the scope 
is quite significant of the research that we're doing because it's going to go a long way to not just informing better state policy and practice when supporting youth with disabilities, but also <coughs> on a federal landscape. It will really uh, contribute extensively um, to the federal policy landscape, keeping in mind that New York State Promise is one of six states that have been funded to really address this issue. I'm going to turn it over to Chris and turn to the question session in a little bit. And again, I want to remind you we welcome uh, questions that you can uh, type in now or during that uh, period. But before I do, I want to mention that all the things you've heard and all the other things you know about ILR uh, really aren't possible without your support. It's your generosity that's allowed us to continue to recruit and retain those great faculty like Jeff Cowie and Lewis Hyman and others. It's your generosity that's allowed us to provide support to students like Simon Boehme so he can take those trips during the summer and others can do so during the academic year and summer. And we can be sure that it's students of all economic background have the capability to participate in the international activities that we're expanding. It's your generosity that's allowed us to maintain terrific facilities here at ILR so students can study in comfortable classrooms and have a terrific library and faculty work in offices that are well equipped. And we thank you for your continuing generosity. Your generosity has kept our capital campaign on track, working as I do with Chris and Sue Sappington and Chrissy Wace and Jennifer Thurston. Uh, we're on track to uh, meet the goals we set out uh, when I first became dean and the university launch it, launched its capital campaign. And you've also helped us generously in your annual support. Our calendar year ended last June. We're in the mix of, of a current ongoing year. But just for the year last uh, June, uh, we completed a campaign that achieved our goal. With, with your help, we raised $1.1 million in that uh, campaign. Annual support matters a lot, uh, as does uh, longer-term uh, commitments, and we thank you uh, for that and, and, and encourage you to continue to interact with us. So we, we know your needs and your opportunities, and we can respond to them. So let me turn it over to, to Chris, and, and, and again, you're welcome to send in subsequent questions in addition to the ones that, that have already been sent in. Yeah, this, is, this is great. It's, it's fun to be, be getting this feedback from the from the audience. So I, I, I've got a question here, it comes from Rob, friend of ours, um, and he asks, uh, you alluded to this in your comments, Harry, but he asks about the new uh, Executive Masters of Professional Studies. He says, how do you feel that this new blended ILR degree, when it comes online, will be able to compete against uh, those programs, the full online programs already offered right now, both at profit and nonprofit mm -hmm. institutions? Can ILR catch up? Well, um Actually, I don't think we need to catch up. We've got incredible experience already in the eCornell courses we've provided, and we're really building on that experience. Um, you know, it, it, it's a new program that's going to blend uh, use of Internet learning, but we're also going to have an in-person content. The faculty said to me they don't want to go to a 100% online program. They want to see the students. They want to have the students come to the campus. They want the students to meet with some executives as part of their experience here. So we actually think that blending is the way to go. Uh, and uh, we're going to maintain really high standards and high quality both in the admissions process and also convey really serious material through this combination of technique, internet and in-person learning. And, I, and uh, you know, we think we're going to provide a product that's not just competitive but actually, you know, sort of rocks the market. There's, there's no other high-end uh, uh, program uh, that has this kind of master's in HR. Um, there's, you know, some decent quality master's programs in HR out there. I, I don't mean to say there's nothing available, uh, but there's nothing at the high end. And we are the high end institution. We are the ILR school uh, with our brand and reputation. You know, ultimately, I, I think this is going to be a terrific uh, means for us to extend our reach even further internationally. We're going to welcome both domestic students and international students mm -hmm. into this program. 
Uh, and it, we're going to be able to do it in a way that isn't going to strip our faculty from their primary focus on teaching undergraduates and graduates here. So that's the other thing that attracts mm -hmm. me as the dean is I want to operate a program that can meet the needs of the students in that program that doesn't take away from the needs of other students Added. that we're going to continue. Yeah, we want to add. Mm -hmm. And that's what we're doing is adding to our portfolio. Okay. Yeah. Great. Um, okay, next one. This is great. We're, they're, they're, they're continuing to come in. Um, Jeff asks, are there long-term, say, five-year growth targets for ILR that are measured in terms of number of students, number of faculty, fundraising, like endowment size, et cetera? What, what are some of the metric yeah. growth goals that you, yeah. that you have? Yeah, so, um, you know, in terms of the undergraduate program, we've grown the size of the undergraduate program uh, over the last uh, 10 years, uh, particularly by admitting more uh, transfer students because the university is keeping a cap not just on us but on all the colleges across campus uh, and we grew our program when I entered ILR in 1985 it was about 750 undergrads we now have 980 mm -hmm. but we as a faculty have decided we don't want to grow that further that's kind of mm -hmm. maximum capacity mm -hmm. it feels right in terms of the facility in terms of student services but in the other programs, we're willing to grow. I mean, the EMPS that we're now launching, I just was talking about, that gives us a chance to grow further in our global reach. We've been growing a bit the MILR mm -hmm. program, mm -hmm. but again, we're kind of at the level uh, that, that, that was our target, getting up to about 60 to 65 students in each class. We don't want to grow it that much more because we don't want to dilute the personal contact. Mm -hmm. You know, endowment and fundraising, you know, our goal... Uh, you know, you helped me develop it and helped me work on it. We, we, we thought hard about what was a really good campaign goal mm -hmm. that was both achievable, realistic, and would really make a difference mm -hmm. to the school. Uh, and, uh, you know, the campaign is going to continue on through 2015, and, you know, we'll continue to engage after that and, and have to think at that point what's the, kind of the next goal regarding sure. uh, endowment. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, overall, we, we, we're really healthy. We're kind of trying to grow where it makes sense incrementally, but at the same time preserve the really small school attributes at ILR. We don't want to ever move away from that. Right? We have no goal, no plan to become a large okay. school. We love the small school feel, and uh, the faculty love that, the students love it, you alumni love it, and, and that is a sacred uh, trait we're going to mm -hmm. uh, continue. You mentioned the, the, the hires. The first thing you talked about today was the searches. So the, it, right. the, you know, you've grown the number, the head count of tenured faculty a little bit, but you don't right. see that right. blowing the doors yeah. off that either. No, right? exactly. So when, when I started as dean um, eight and a half years ago, we had 48 tenure track faculty, mm -hmm. and we're now up the last count I just saw yesterday, the official count for mm -hmm. this year is 59. Mm -hmm. Uh, and the hiring that we're doing now is largely a part of, of the renewal, the faculty renewal effort. So we're essentially hiring faculty in anticipation that the older faculty, myself included, are going to be retiring uh, actively over the next five to ten years. And, and so the, the six faculty that I'm hiring now, I don't see that as net growth to our size. I see it as healthy hiring now. You know, we learn in academia um, you don't want to wait till the senior faculty retire mm -hmm. and then go out and hire new faculty because the new faculty want to come when they are senior leaders that they can work with. Um, and so we're, we're essentially replenishing the faculty in anticipation of hiring, but not, as you were sort of suggesting, we're not seeking to greatly expand the size of the faculty. So you could actually see that yeah. net number go yeah, down. Yeah, the net number may go down a little, a little bit, bit as once we get over the additional hiring to bring us back. Uh -huh. You know, I'm, you know, my own guess is uh, sort of uh, 60 is about the right number given how much we've grown the undergraduate okay. population. Okay. Sure. You know, I, I could have said more explicitly part of the first growth uh, occurring in my uh, tenure in the faculty was to sort of catch up with the growth in the undergraduate sure. population. And then now we're more aggressively focusing on faculty renewal hiring. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Great. That's great. Um, okay. Let me just get to the next one here. Um, interesting question comes in and, and asks, um, you've talked a lot of, about a lot of highlights. Can you specifically make connections to uh, how, I, how ILR alumni might connect back to the school around these types of things? Yeah. They're, 
reaction I have to that is everything from internship opportunities, yeah. recruitment, yeah. fundraising, which we've talked about, but I want you to... Yeah, no, you're exactly right. We, we have a terrific continuing uh, semester credit internship mm -hmm. program. Mm -hmm. About a third of our students go off for a semester, often in their junior year, some in their senior year. Mm -hmm. And it's the alumni that make those internships so meaningful and possible. We mm -hmm. don't just send our students out to be clerks and to do paperwork. They got to work in settings where they're really engaged. And, and we, the, yeah, mm -hmm. we get those really rich internships through the help of our alumni. Mm -hmm. Uh, we also do events on campus. You know, each fall, the Alumni Association, you know, working with your office, mm -hmm. uh, has an event timed at the same time that the Alumni Association is having its board meeting. It's a career fair mm -hmm. where the alumni come in and talk about their careers. We have a, a group talking about HR, another segment about law careers, another one on public service, mm -hmm. and the alumni make that contribution. And as you know, we, we do events in New York and other locations where our students are during their internships or other travels and they go visit the alumni uh, sometimes in groups sometimes as individuals in the webex and in our which are winter opportunities mm -hmm. dur during the winter break we have spring break opportunities all of that we can do at ILAR only because the alumni provide those great opportunities we i, I mean I, I can't even conceive of how as a dean i could right. fund and support those kind of activities without the, the work of the alumni. It's, it's, it's the alums that make it uh, so real. You know, the other thing, just another sidelight, but it's important to the students to, uh, just to, to bring it out, is alums are often coming to campus and talking in our classes. We welcome that. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of you all are working in the field in different areas uh, where, again, the students are enriched by hearing about your experiences. Some of it are part of what we refer to as live cases, where the students are looking in, in real time at ongoing problems and issues that an organization is facing. And often an alum uh, brings that problem into a class, mm -hmm. and then the students you know, focus on it as part of a project. Very practical. It's, again, an, mm -hmm. there's, a, you know, mm -hmm. there's an infinite array of ways. And we're also, you know, I know you do, we welcome suggestions from alums sure. to you know, think of ways to go beyond what we're currently doing. We're, mm -hmm. we, so a lot of these things that we're doing evolved because uh, you know, a smart Still alumni came along mm -hmm. and said, hey, why don't we try this? Right. You know, another example I can give about that is international internships, mm -hmm. as you know. Yeah. You know, we weren't quite sure, you know, how we were going to uh, identify and locate those uh, internships. We, we knew there was growing student interest, and it's been key alums. John Skelfo, among mm -hmm. others, was one of the first ones to help us get some of those placements, and they've expanded greatly, and we've had, a, you know, terrific uh, uh, opportunities there. Using webcasts as a way to Using reach out webcasts, to Using webcasts, yeah, if exactly. If I remember correctly, there was a couple uh, yeah. conversations about yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. Great. Um, well, okay, this is great. The next one kind of follows on, and you, you alluded to this in that, in that last answer. Uh, question comes in and, and from Ruth, and it says, uh, recruiting. Um, are ILR undergrads getting job offers? Are they getting good job offers? Has, mm -hmm. has the job market come back for our, for our ILR students? Yeah, I mean, the job market is hot as ever. I mean, it, it's actually amazing. The typical student is wrestling with a difficult decision of choosing between three to six wow. lucrative That's offers. Um, you know, to be honest, the, the, the task is overload. Okay. They get so many opportunities, and, and the, those opportunities often emerge out of internships that they do in the previous summer or summers. Um, you know, it's interesting that, that, that their question suggested that the job market had gone down. Mm -hmm. The job market softened a bit at ILR, you know, in 2008, 2009 mm -hmm. from the effects of the financial crisis, mm -hmm. but it never really went away. I mean, we actually have had a strong placement record uh, over the last several uh, years going back to 2008 and 2009. You know, some of us in our gallows type humor actually joke, well, you need HR managers <laughs> to fire right. other people or at least to deal with lawsuits associated right. with all the disequilibrium of, of layoffs and reorganization. Um, but, uh, you know, to be honest, uh, the market is as strong as ever. You know, we have a terrific staff led by uh, Regina Duffy Moravic that counsels our students closely. You know, that's true both of our undergraduates who are going out. Right. In our upon graduation in the MILRs. Mm -hmm. Our MS PhD students, we care a lot about them. They're getting placed at terrific universities. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Oxford, LSE, Stanford, Harvard, um, Chicago, mm -hmm. Carnegie Mellon, Rutgers, Penn State. You know, I'm just rambling on about yeah. recent placements that wow. I know about. Our students are, are doing really well across the dimension. And, and again, often with the help of alums and sure. some of those sure. uh, uh, job market placements. and. 
and then they're competing well in the international university marketplace. Awesome. Sounds like a strength. Yeah. That's great. Um, looping back, this is great. We're getting kind of feedback on some of the some of your remarks. Yeah. Jerry is asking uh, for a little more uh, description of what this campus-wide economics thing is all about. What's, yeah, what's no, that? that's a great question. So what happened is uh, two years ago after long years of study, you know, mm -hmm. too many long years of study, but we finally moved uh, uh, addressing the needs in economics, what we did at the urging of the provost is, is create a campus-wide department. And the mechanics are that we have the 29 economists from the economics department in arts and science uh, merged in with the uh, 12 economists as part of the labor economics department at ILR. They're the core members of this new campus-wide department. Mm -hmm. And then they invited in 11 other eminent economists mm -hmm. uh, to matrix into that department from other schools and colleges, from the Johnson School, Dyson mm -hmm. School, Hotel, and Human Ecology. Uh, and that department is up and running, and the way it operates is it, it has uh, two uh, deans, co-deans. I serve as one of those co-deans, and the dean of arts and science uh, serves as the other co-dean. And the current chair of the department uh, is Kevin Halleck from our faculty, although we're going to rotate that chairmanship mm -hmm. so every other time it's someone from ILR and then someone from arts and science. You know, what it's done, its purpose is to improve the curriculum, particularly for undergraduates. Mm -hmm. We actually always had a well-coordinated curriculum at the Ph.D. level uh, because of the field nature of Ph.D. studies at Cornell. But for undergraduates, our programs are compartmentalized, you know, because of the college structure. Mm -hmm. So for an ILR student to take a course in public finance or health economics or econometrics or international finance, it wasn't always clear uh, either where they should go for that course mm -hmm. or whether the seats were available, whether there was enough room for all the student interest. Um, and so part of the key purpose of the, the new initiative is to improve uh, the curriculum, to improve more coordination and training mm -hmm. uh, of students, you know, particularly for ILR students when they want to go out and take courses beyond labor economics. Their labor economics for ILR students is still going to be taught at the ILR school. Okay. But for those students, and there's ever more of them who want to take other economics classes, it gives them more uh, access. The other key issue with the uh, creation of, of this uh, campus-wide department is it improves our stature in the field. We have a terrific group of economists across the campus and we didn't have a mechanism, a vehicle for recognition of mm -hmm. that group. People would mistakenly just focus on the economists that were solid in the arts and science college but not as great, not as expansive as all the economics talent among the faculty mm -hmm. across the university. Mm -hmm. Talent at ILR, talent at Johnson, talent at Dyson. So having a single unified department gives us more recognition. Now, why does that matter? It matters because it helps us recruit mm -hmm. even better faculty to come in the future, or solid faculty. It helps us retain strong Grand faculty. Mm -hmm. It helps us retain and mm -hmm. recruit great graduate students. It helps us when faculty are, are sending in grant proposals that their department is known and ranked uh, more highly. So part of it is essentially a PR effort right. to really publicize what we have, and then part of it is to create better teaching, better curriculum, uh, within our various programs. And it's gone well. It's two years in the running. I never thought it would actually go this smoothly, given the years it took us to actually get here. You know, we're academics. We're not the quickest group to act. Mm -hmm. But we finally did act at the urging of the provost, and, you know, it's it's really been going well, really going well. And so the headline for, the, for an ILR who might be watching this is, it's not like their labor economists are going away. Yeah, Clearly exactly. Clearly you said it's part, yeah. of, it's part and parcel still in the school. And really the upside from an undergraduate's perspective is really the access and coherence yeah. of the department. Exactly. Okay. Yeah, well said. And it's mm -hmm. also true, as what I was talking about earlier, the, the, the business consortium has yep. very similar Same objectives. Kind of, mm -hmm. Better access, coordination, curriculum mm -hmm. development. Um, and, you know, with regard to our labor economists, they're still housed here at yeah. ILR. They didn't want to move, and That's I didn't important. want them to move. Right. That's they're still a part of school committees. Okay. You know, their core base is still the ILR school, mm -hmm. but their professional link uh, and their curriculum development link is to this wider campus-wide department. Great. You got time for one more? Yeah, yeah sure. All right. Sure. So this one, is, uh, this one comes to us from um, uh, uh, Kurt. And it, it, it's, it's asking kind of as you, you haven't really touched on this, but as you're getting to the end of your deanship, um, 
could, out of the things that you've talked about, the initiatives that you've either continued, expanded, or initiated in your deanship, could you pick one or two things that you really like to see accomplished, or, or at least certainly get up and running uh, um, in the in the next year and a half or so before you step down from being dean and return to the faculty? Yeah. No, that's a great question. I I, I think about. It. I'll talk, I'll talk about two, and okay. one is. Is, is is not something new, but it's just further development of our internationalization. Okay. I mean, again, it started before me. I've tried to accelerate it and solidify it, and I, I want to continue on that track. And, you know, the next dean and deans is going to have to you know, further it. You know, mm -hmm. internationalization is here to stay. It's going to go even further. Mm -hmm. But, you know, with a year and a half to go, I, I want to enhance, solidify and extend our internationalization. That's why I traipsed off to China, because I thought you know, we needed an, an engagement. We needed an international partner right. with China. Um, the, uh, the other thing I, I'm, I'm in the middle of, uh, and I, I, I want to continue working hard on, is you know, the faculty hiring, the faculty renewal. Mm -hmm. there, there's nothing else that, that further develops the school than bringing in young talent, bright, young, new professors who you know, steer the school in new ways and challenge some of the ideas and structures and ways of thinking and ways of working. Uh, they bring a new energy and, and vitality. They, they focus on uh, uh, different topics than, than the rest of us have, have dwelled on. And it, it are just, they're just a great new raw talent into the school. And there's nothing more important for me to do. And the next dean, I think, is going to have to continue that mm -hmm. because the retirements are going to going to go, the wave is going to go for five to ten years. Sure. So it's going to face the school the next for that well. period. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Great. Great. Good questions. Great. Thank you all Great. for the, those good questions. Well, thank you, Harry. Yeah. Thank you for joining us, spending a little bit of your time uh, here in a busy part of the year. Thanks for your questions. Sorry if we didn't get to all of them. We did want to kind of be respectful of, of the runtime here. Um, I, I, I can just echo uh, Harry's sentiments about our appreciation for all that, that our alumni and stakeholders and friends do to support the ILR school. My, my last little pitch on that w will be uh, tis the season. So back to Harry's point, giving.cornell.edu. The ILR annual fund is, is, as Harry mentioned, the key thing that, that, that you can do to help us on an annual basis. And uh, I know you're making a lot of those decisions at this time of the year. So we appreciate your support. Again, thanks for, thanks for joining us. And uh, uh, have a happy new year. Happy holidays. Yes, sir.